on the 19th of May, one of the world's leading scholars, Dr. Shabir Ali, considered to be by most probably their best debater. A good friend of mine, we've debated six times in the past, so we know each other well. The last time we debated was in 2014. Made a video for Ramadan, or during Ramadan, which he does every year at Ramadan. And on that video, it's just a, not, a, not a very long video. He made this statement. Uh, in North Africa, there is a slightly different text uh, that is uh, based on a slightly different reading, uh, mostly corresponding to what we read in the rest of the world, uh, but with some slight variations that do not affect anything that Muslims believe uh, and do not have any major impact on uh, any Muslim practices. He had to admit to it because this has now been discovered. This has been known for a thousand years. This is nothing new. The scholars of Islam have always known this. Uh, they've known this since the 10th century. We're in the 21st century now. But what he did, and this is what he was very careful of, he said, when you look at all these, now he only said a few. But with some slight variations, some slight variations that do not affect anything that Muslims believe. Well, there's not just a few. 93,000 is not a few. But he said none of them, none of these, the dots or the vowels, change any doctrine, change any belief, change any practice. Those are the three things he kept reminding the audience. So what? So there's difference. But they all say the same thing. Nothing has been changed. In the Huff's translation, it or a version, it has Bareyati. Bareyati is the word you can see underlined in green. Creatures. In the Warsh, which is the one that's used in North Africa, it's the Al Asbahani version of the Warsh because there's more than one. Uh, the word is al bare ati, bare ati, with the glottal stop there, <clears throat> in underlined in yellow. You can see there that's complete. It is a different word, especially at the end. So <clears throat> that refers to as the innocent. So the translation in the Hafs would be: Indeed, they who disbelieved among the people of the scriptures and the polytheists will be in the fire of hell, abiding eternally therein. Those are the worst of creatures. So it's talking about us, really, Christians. In the Warsh, which is popular in North Africa, the translation would say, indeed, they who disbelieved among the people of the scriptures, that's us, and the polytheists, those are the heathens, will be in the fire of hell, abiding eternally therein. Those are the worst of the innocent. Well, now, there are two problems here. One is, are Christians the worst creatures, or are we innocent? And if we are innocent, what are we, along with the Jews and the polytheists, doing in hell? So that has a theological problem. You could do a doctoral thesis just on that. Give credit to Hatu. She is the one that saw, saw the problem. She was the one that had the tenacity. She was the one that went and collected all these Qurans. She was the one that went public with them. She was the one that would go from mosque to mosque to mosque. She's been in 400 mosques now, taking these Qurans with her and just looking, showing them to the imams, showing them to the imams, some of whom have now left Islam and come to Christ because of this material. Oh, this, is called, this is called polemics. I can't tell you any more than that. I'm not permitted to say any more than that because I can't tell you who they are because they will be they will be harassed and killed by Muslims if they find out. While we were online yesterday, we were we were only off for one hour unpacking this, the three of us. While that was happening, we were told that Muhammad Hijab had now censored that 25 minutes off out of his out of his view. I couldn't believe it. I'm sure He's, it's a coincidence. Yeah. Go up to Muhammad Hijab's site, just write in YouTube, Muhammad Hijab, right. look at what he's done. He has censored it. Yes. He has taken out the last 29 minutes. Just stopped it there before this question was asked. Yeah. You can't do that today in the 21st century. Don't people realize that that's admitting fault? Perfect. The populace, how do, they, how do they deal with this kind of criticism? Well, they either kill you, or they harass you, or they burn the material. Or, as you saw in Cairo uh, in 1924, they sink it into the Nile. Now, in the 21st century, they just censor it. They just censor it. Can you see? Whenever Muslims on this side, this is the populist side, this is the majority of Muslims, whenever they come up against something against their Quran, they try to shut you down. This is the book we introduced last year. A new book is coming out just this month from Daniel Brubaker. Yes. Which could introduce a whole new set of variants. And see, what... Shabir Ali doesn't realize he has helped us to get the discussion away from the Kirat back to the 7th century, back now 
to the manuscripts, which is what we've been waiting for them to do, because that is the that is the material Qadi has not answered. That is the material Yasser Qadi has not looked at. When he thinks that the Kira is the most difficult question, wait till he finds out what we're going to introduce this week. So we're going to look at the Kira, we're going to look at the Ahruf, we're going to be looking at the Rosum. The Rosum is the one I want to get to. The Rosum is what Dan Van Brubaker's. This is the this is the mother load. This is where the rubber hits the road. This is what's going to destroy the Quran. Because this these are the earliest manuscripts. This has nothing to do with dots. This has nothing to do with vowels. This has to do with the skeletal text. And the skeletal text does not at all jive with the Quran. And that's why we need to thank God for Adnan Rashi. Thank God for Yasser Qadi. Thank God for Hijab, Muhammad Hijab. Thank God for Shabir Ali. All these guys have done us a favor. They have basically opened up a huge crack in Islam. 